सो गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज फिफ्टी फर्स्ट टेक टॉक फ्रॉम टेक फोरम इट्स अ जॉइंट वेंचर ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ इंजीनियर्स पुणे एज वेल एज टेक फोरम एंड वी आर हैप्पी एंड प्राउड टू हैव सच सेशंस बिकॉज वी गेट वेरी गुड रिस्पॉन्सेज फ्रॉम द लिसनर्स we will be having today a wonderful presentation from makran vaidya it is a little known explosion proof protection to devices and equipment for hazardous areas we all know in chemical industry and many industries there are a lot of hazardous areas and explosive areas and you need a very good protection for uh, the equipments and makran is going to throw some light Uh, explosion proof protection is a in hazardous area is a less known subject and mostly known only to the limited uh, fireproof and aluminum casting box enclosed and chemical industry refineness plasma applications pharma applications so very little uh, knowledge we have is a vast subject and it has to confirm to the ic 60079-0 uh, to 35 sub sections covering various types systems compliances iso 80079236 are uh, in, in, in uh, the, the the standards equip devices parts in hazardous area so he has extensively worked in this field i will talk about little bit about makran because makran i know as a bird watcher first a avid bird watcher a lot of knowledge in bird watching but he runs a social entrepreneur businessman and director of vega instrumentation private limited uh, his present activities are to manufacture equipments and devices required protection in hazardous areas which includes entry six safety devices control for safety and protection flame fire detection ipc uh, and lot of activities uh, so without spending much time we have chairman uh, of institution of engineers mr sanjay jhope i will request sanjay ji to say few words about iii institution of engineers pune local center Sanjay ji, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Vila Tharapade sir. Uh, good morning to you all. Uh, myself, uh, Sanjay Zope, Chairman, Institution of Engineers, Pune Local Center. Uh, today's speaker, Sri Makaran Vaidya ji, Tech Forum uh, Office Bearers, uh, Vila Tharapade ji, other distinguished uh, guests. Uh, I would like to tell two lines about the Institution of Engineers. The Institution of Engineers India. is the largest multidisciplinary professional body of engineers established in 1920 with its headquarters in kolkata <coughs> the largest it's the largest professional body of engineers uh, it was incorporated under royal charter on 9 september 935 by the then his king majesty king george v later on it continued as a protected body corporate after the under article 372 of the independence we have around 124 five centers pan india six or six chapters six foras and various other organs uh, we have got a very good center at a central location zangli maharaj road in pune very good infrastructure and this infrastructure can be utilized for any engineering activities dissemination of the information conducting the engineering activities and I, so this infrastructure we provide to the people for free of cost also as long as the programs conducted are not chargeable basis so i request to those who are interested in doing any activities in the engineering related or any other subject or sustainable development goals or etc they are most welcome to join on the, to the institution hands and we can promote the activity thank you so much vilas rabde ji and i welcome you all once again and I hand over to uh, vilas rabde sir <clears throat> thank you sanjay ji for kind words and yes uh, tech forum always get very good support from institution of engineers thanks to dr sanjay jhope on 11th of may we will be celebrating uh, technology day and it will be in the auditorium of uh, 
institution of engineers firodi auditorium and we have invited vishwas kare to give a talk also we have invited one young entrepreneur from yavatmal who has 35 patents as his credit and he is going to unveil his activities what he is doing in uh, in yavatmal and how many patents he has converted into a product very inspiring and exciting talk without spending much time i will request makarad vaidya to start his presentation on explosion proof protection to device and equipment for hazardous area makaran ji please go ahead good morning all now can you hear clearly i hope so yes please very clear yeah. very clear yes okay. it's the clear it's okay. the clear yeah thank you the today's topic is explosion proof uh, to device and equipment for hazardous area it is actually uh, we are not protecting the equipment from the explosion or from the fire we are actually protecting the hazardous area property and human life working in the plant or uh, nearby places uh, of such locations uh, from the uh, any hazard occurred because of the explosion happening because of the devices itself those devices uh, may be electrical as well as uh, non electrical non electrical devices you can i am starting with the other uh, Uh, aspect of the uh, thing than before going to the electrical thing non electrical means you can count like a bearing uh, which gets uh, uh, which gets hot because of the uh, revolutions or non maintenance or lubrication so the bearing hot hotness of the bearing also is a cause of uh, explosion so similarly there are a number of uh, non electrical uh, um, equipments or uh, uh, things devices which may cause explosion now coming back to the electricals as usually we know on the field we can see the control panels then um, push buttons and terminals and uh, displays and all all sorts of transmitters sensors so all those things are actually carrying some electrical energy and as i said in my earlier uh, uh, talk also uh, this uh, energy is uh, you have to control and you have to look into because this energy is actually a cause of any misbehavior or any uncontrolled activity usually we design and we build with the um, these equipments and devices in the control conditions but the things go beyond our hand sometimes because of some uh, reasons some accidents some uh, um, faults or something like that and those things can cause a problem in uh, plant itself so to understand this uh, to understand this are uh, To understand this, we have to understand first what is the fire triangle. Okay, fire is a, a, happens or occurs because of three components: oxygen, fuel, and heat. Okay, there has to be oxygen, there has to be fuel, and there has to be a, a source of ignition or source of uh, uh, fire actually or heat, which will cause the fire. Okay, too much fuel and less oxygen also will not cause any fire, as well as lean fuel and more oxygen also will not cause a fire because lean fuel and too much fuel. are not in the balanced state of uh, combustible mixture okay so there is not a problem but usually what happens is that in usual in a normal fire i have written here two words fire and flame there is a this distinguish there is a difference between those two things fire means it is a uh, uncontrolled activity or uh, spontaneously happening or intentionally uh, made a thing but it is it has um, outcome of mixture of three things oxygen fuel and heat and then it becomes out of control okay so usually if you go to the youtube and uh, google you will find that fire when it happens the exothermic reaction and the uh, out, outburst of the uh, energy is so that it is then it is beyond control so it is better to control before it happens that is the funda behind this all these things okay so here these three parameters are supposed to be the uncontrolled or unknown variables right and the oxygen and fuel are always present in the hazardous location now what are the hazardous location will come to that slide next we have we have we can only deal with the heat okay and the heat does not mean the ambient temperatures like a uh, cold country we have got a cold uh, minus 30 and all that and in hot uh, gulf and all that we have got plus 50 50 plus temperature so we are not talking about the ambient condition this heat means the com the uh, temperature of a flash point or a combustion temperature of a mixture of a uh, flammable mixture i mean to say so that is a heat i mean to say and that heat can occur or that um, 
source of ignition can happen because of the spark because of some switching because of some fire itself explosion itself some um, accident you can call it as and the flame flame is a exactly the same thing oxygen fuel and heat but it is a controlled activity you will see the flame in the furnaces boilers and etc so there that, that is not called as a fire it is called a flame it is always in a controlled uh, environment it is always in a controlled act, uh, in controlled mode i know to say and in fire you, say for example i will tell you the in the lemans term what is the difference between flame and fire in fire if you have got a detector flame sensor okay fire sensor that fire fire sensor monitors no flame and it triggers when the flame is there and in furnaces and boiler the same sensor is used to sense the no flame condition that means when the no flame is there it triggers and when the flame is there it is happy so it is exactly ulta it is exactly the reverse thing okay in boiler we are very much concerned about the extinct uh, extinguished flame not the stationary flame when there is a flame we are happy and at the same time in the fire thing we are unhappy when there is a fire uh, flame and we are okay when there is no flame so this is a fire triangle you have to understand first now what are the areas and environment and workplaces and situations this is a typical photograph of a, a chemical plant the mines all these things have started with the mines and accidents in the mines okay followed by the oil fields in oil fields actually this flame and explosion proof is not a purview of oil or coal okay it is a actually a Uh, only gas and dust and fibers and all that okay but the oil fields usually has the natural gas first and then oil follows okay coal also the methane is always there present okay in the coal fields so mines actually started this uh, uh, area of uh, concern refineries chemical plants pharma apis active pharmaceutical ingredients these are uh, locations where you find these situations even the for our layman people uh, this um, petrol pump and gas stations are actually the workplace or ammunition factories all that fuel stores warehouses and all that uh, spillages is also a thing now there are international standards which are evolved okay i started with the international standard this side okay so it is actually iso first then uh, electric code electrotechnical code was there for this thing then we adopt uh, this is uh in indian standard okay iec well, uh, up, up to now so now it has become iec is 6079 dash in the bureau of indian standards other well known the for example these standards vary do vary as per the continents okay russia they have got different then uh, europe they have got different then uh, canada and the usa they have got different so there are many places these things are uh, different standards are there they are not completely adopted iec as well as they have to in their iec supersedes everything and iso supersedes iec so that's the thing but still sometimes you have to comply with the uh, atex and nec when you deal with usa and europe but in india it is a uh, is and it is iec basically this is the institute csir um, central institute of mining and fuel research okay is a testing and certifying authorities and laboratories okay it's a government uh, organization for for india then there is a karandikar laboratory at palghar maharashtra uh, they are uh, listed on iec portal uh, iec um, ex portal uh, to certify uh, third party certification for iec certification for testing and certify uh, this thing uh, equipment intertech new delhi is also there who deal with these things okay they also can provide atex elka labs new mumbai is also there so now what are these scores actually iso iec iec is uh, intentionally written because there is a mixture of standards okay we did not have to go i just wanted to show this slide because i want to show you that how they are classified the things dep depending on the situation mitigating the things for example many of we of us we know in hazardous area maximum uh, or everybody must be aware of it uh, what is uh, flame proof what is x proof usually we deal with we usually we know about it as uh, junction box which looks like some aluminum casting by the way it is not actually aluminum it is lm6 it is aluminum alloy aluminum is not acceptable in flame proof area it is lm6 uh, the ingredients are some percentage of silica and copper 
okay for uh, impact uh, impact protection the flame or the spark or the fire can happen because of the impact uh, of a surface so that is being reduced by addition of some other material in the aluminium so usually we go uh, come across with a uh, junction boxes then we come across with a uh, thermo thermocouple uh, temperature sensor uh, uh, housing then we can see about the transmitters level transmitters uh, flow transmitters temperature transmitters etc on the field and uh, that has been covered uh, uh, in the uh, uh, first like this one chapter 1 i mean to say so then uh, as uh, things go along uh, the challenges come along the modify the thing they improve the technology they uh, develop technologies and then they deal with those things okay because everything couldn't uh, could not happen in just the first uh, thing so so they have to go for uh, going on, go on adding the uh, further things okay uh, this slide i have maintained over here because there are some classic things uh, for example the 14 electrical installation design selection and erection that is a good uh, um, opportunity or business uh, venture actually speaking then the third thing is uh, this thing 17 in which electrical installation inspection and maintenance so these are actually beyond actually uh, the type of protection they are providing they are actually services i mean to say so i am mentioning over here then uh, this one is also 20 material characteristics classification so these are all equipment uh, so these are all uh, performance uh, etc and here comes the another uh, which is not covered in iec iec is electro techno uh, electro technical so they are not covering this so this non electrical equipment in hazardous area is been covered by iso not by iec okay and during this uh, my journey of in this field uh, i have to also deal with other standards uh, one can guess what other standards may uh, happen to be come across those are ingress protection fuses electrical insulations etc so this thing some material of constructions and all that so those thing also you have to take care during working in this area okay while dealing with this uh, business so what are the role of a manufacturer integrator in this area the role is very other than manufacturing developing other than business the the role is very prime because it's a very serious thing And, uh, and nowadays in the era of the stringent audits and uh, cameras everywhere okay uh, and the surveillance everywhere so you just cannot skip the any bypass or anything like that so documentations is a prime thing declarations are very important in this uh, business actually self declaration you have to uh, do lot of uh, and then you have to face if there is any consequences about the compliances every anything you do you have to comply to that marking is a very prime and template is very serious business in flame and explosion proof uh, equipment protection so that carries a lot actually they are not taken casually uh, and compliance updated and upgrade of the standards usually these standards and in national as well as international they do change and they do have some uh, more things um, you have to upgrade them so you have to Keep keep on doing that. Okay, so that is the main role of a manufacturer integrator. Oh, my business profile actually. I have got a team of three people. The first person is expert in exproof, uh, first uh, is thing, flame proof uh, enclosures. The second, Jitendra is actually expert in the uh, purging system. As I shown you in that uh, slide. This. in this pressure edged enclosure system so he has worked in that area since his career started and uh, he was he was actually working when there was a nitrogen was used as a um, purging uh, media okay after the jonasberg summit work summit they have diluted those standards okay to the compressed clean instrument air okay of course it is not a simple inclusion of a instrument air as a purging they also modified uh, uh, the technology the uh, prerequisites of the controllers okay previously it was not there it was just like a nitrogen envelope 
and that will uh, protect the equipment uh, rather uh, environment from any explosion happened in the equipment right so now they have developed uh, with a compressed air but with a technology with some more sensors and more uh, um, sops and all that so that now normal uh, clean air instrument air can be used for bulging kay dal hello nahi hello ha so now so now please unmute your mics so now uh, i am makran vaidya and i deal with the uh, intrinsic safe uh, safe uh, products so our journey actually started with a as a who was a simple vendor to me okay supplying me the junction boxes and enclosures and all that then we started indigenous indigenous development and value additions of various products including honeywell flame detectors we actually uh, have a lot of range of flame detectors by honeywell we integrated them into uh, enclosures okay flame relays and flame detectors and we produced manufactured various products and then supplied and uh, by honeywell themselves the major supplier went to uh, jamshedpur team tata tata steel i need to say okay we tried to export it also okay then for yokogawa actually we both worked for there was a challenge in controller so for example this is a controller okay this control here you can see okay in the hazardous area you cannot just touch a controller okay by for setting the temperature or by changing the its parameters okay because you cannot open the door the opening of the door requires a lot of uh, allen bolts to loosen and that also in the running uh, plant it is not at all possible it is not at all recommended so no question of opening that door even in that maintenance and all that you can do it but otherwise you cannot so even the simple uh, set point also you cannot change so how to do that so this product i will show you later actually so this thing actually uh, dealt with that the same keypad was over here and then this keypad is communicating with this controller through modbus and i achieved this uh, for yokogawa okay and then we started now steady business and steady supply of this product continuously okay this is ut35 yokogawa process controller then for mitsubishi we have developed the hmi human machine interface and in industrial pc uh, in hazardous area okay and for ge actually did not turn up but we have developed successfully but it not turned up into a business uh, uh, revenue it is a trolley based uh, data acquisition and monitoring for them actually it was a tablet we used windows tablet okay and more thing we have we do such thing eventually uh, i have developed this pergen pressurized system and i am actually giving showing you the story my story uh, in the way of the journey actually speaking uh, it started with integration and system solution it started with actually relay based logic for that purging system then eventually i developed with my own pico uh, controller and plc based system first then i developed that embedded controller and now it is a full fledged controller you can see over here you can see over here this is actually a purging per controller this is a enclosure in which the analyzer is there this is our this is our shop floor at bhivandi okay it is a, during dispatch of this august uh, 23 uh, sorry 22 okay august september i think so so this is the, all analyzers are there now all when you see the end user actually okay so this is actually a controller and this controller uh, keeps this enclosure com in compliance with i icis 60079-2 okay so it deals with all that uh, parameters and all those uh, measures to um, fulfill the requirement of exp uh, ex uh, p that is a purging and pressurizing um system okay there is one uh, method in which you have to deal with that okay it requires a field devices of um, it has the field devices of intrinsic safety that i have developed and got certified from simper and bath okay the usp there are computers also the usp is a we provide a vortex cooler as an integral part of a controller 
then solenoid wall is also uh, it requires two solenoid wall one for vortex and one for the purging itself the solenoid wall is actually uh, embedded or been integrated in the housing itself so it, is, it doesn't looks like a external component then i have recently um, introduced uh, touch keys to access to configure this controller okay the controller uh, in the next uh, in next slide also you can see the better view so those now been developed to the touch keys okay for configuration parameter settings and during maintenance and installation i do provide uh, through wifi network but uh, it, it depends on the uh, site that if they allow because the in hazardous area still the uh, issues are there for the uh, network connectivity and the wireless connectivity but uh, i have got the facility to do that okay usually we require do, do require version updates and from where okay and diagnostics of some faults okay then uh, i have introduced actually it is not implemented yet but i uh, going through these studies and uh, this thing i realized that the humidity or the moisture is also cause of a fire or a explosion or a hazard that i realized and then uh, it came to my mind why not to go for a humidity sensor in the this uh, enclosure okay to monitor the condensation happen okay in the given day also you will find that in 24 hours clock cycle uh, you get a problem of condensation okay and the condensation actually picks up the um, these uh, toxic uh, or the flammable or the combustible gases and then uh, when it uh, temperature rises it releases those things okay creating the environment which is a uh, You, see, you can call as a hazard, hazard, and then in our control, this, for example, this control panel, it has got a switching devices like contactors and switches and all that. So every switching means there is has to be some spark, okay? So accidentally or in, uh, in otherwise also. So those sparks may cause the combustion or the fire. So those thing has to be uh, taken care. So humidity sensor actually and and the VOC sensor. Uh, now how come voc have come is it actually these control panels are in hazardous area so there has to be a surrounding everywhere there is a hazard and there is a um, flammable mixtures okay so inside also there may be may not be leakages are also always there okay and at the same time the polymer of a um, control panel hardware for example cable trays cables contactors everything they are actually Get deteriorated because the ambient conditions and all that, and they also can release some uh, volatile organic compounds. So these also are the cause of the fire and um, so I realized it and then I have actually introduced these things. Going to introduce these things in my controller, and I got certification for the humidity and VOC also. The sensor was certified by Simper Dhanbad. So this is this controller. Uh, this is actually a test setup for the demo purpose. it shows everything from air filter regulator to the bypass wall and the solenoid wall also is shown here here the solenoid wall is embedded inside and this is the controller display and all that now these switches are not touch switches so this is responsible to keep this enclosure safe in hazardous area that is the thing okay now uh, while dealing with the hazardous area we also came across with the non hazardous areas and applications okay those are typical things for example i'll tell you very obvious the toxic uh, surroundings or uh, some corrosive surrounding for example salt pans there the uh, environment is so bad that within one year one season the entire uh, control panel uh, box gets means just disappears the contacts of the contactors just as if they are they were not there so those things we can uh, deal with with the purging and pressurizing purging and pressurizing those two words itself are sufficient to understand that first you purge out the uh, stale air inside the control panel and then you pressurize it to the positive pressure that more than that ambient around so that the, there is no um, uh, mix uh, contamination the second application i deal to was uh, in the printers printers are usually in the production area of many pharmaceutical those are those those are not apis so they are not actually hazardous locations they are simple uh, production areas in pharmaceutical industry 
and in which they do require a printer also clean room uh, they do require printer and then printer usually you cannot keep it in that location because the contamination for example if the, if the one drug is now getting manufactured and if you change the drug okay so paracetamol to some different then uh, the contamination may happen because of this printer it has been recorded by auditors so they have to deal with this so they then did with uh, network printing but it happens to be that the network printer room is away from the place and the person in charge which is double dressed into the clean room uh, area they are, he has to move out and take out the print out and uh, collect the print out and all that so it is not possible so they wanted the printer to be there itself but that printer has got the issue so i did uh, Uh, with the uh, positive pressure uh, um, to the printer case, and then the problem was solved. This is an uh, uh, ongoing process, and this slide itself shows the evolution or the stages of my development. This was my actually the first thing. It is a typical application of human machine interface. Many of us know that HMI are the displays or the operator console or the operators uh, this thing uh, interface. Uh, in a normal condition, in normal machines, in normal shop floors, it is very easy to touch it and work upon it. Okay, resist your capacity any means. Okay, but in hazardous location, you just cannot have it. You just don't uh, can't do it. Okay, so I dealt with it like this. There are the keys actually. There are keys actually, and these keys actually are programmed. Uh, you can. Uh, to communicate with this controller through Modbus, okay. So that interface I developed. That was the first development I did, okay. And then eventually I got certification and I got a product like this. This is a you can call it as a IPC, industrial PC, okay. Screen, okay. Standard screen, okay. This is just a SS cladding for a, a clean room or for the exhibition purpose. But actually the inside is this EXD enclosure. Standard aluminum LM6 uh, enclosure in which this uh, monitor or this HMI is uh, installed, and this keyboard is a IP65 keyboard, stainless steel. All these MOCs are uh, certified and it is uh, it's acceptable in hazardous area. Okay, so this is a metallic keyboard and a tracker ball instead of a mouse. Our standard keyboard and our standard mouse uh, will not be acceptable. Is not acceptable for, for that matter. So I got this also certified from uh, uh, this thing, and recently I developed this touch screen. Touch screen. So here you can see this is actually, and I have intentionally showing you that this is actually a uh, photograph from the exhibition uh, stall. But these photographs are these photographs are actually candid photographs because at sight you don't you can't do the photography, and I have not done any model photography or the. Studio photography for these products, and intentionally I'm showing you the candid photographs. So this uh, Yokogawa, uh, sorry, not Yokogawa, Mitsubishi uh, HMI, okay. And then this is the keyboard. So this is now uh, ongoing business uh, in last year and this year too. And this is actually a uh, touch uh, touch screen I have developed, and now I am going to get certification. Yeah, it's another process certification for this, okay, touch screen. uh without any keyboard or uh, tracker ball okay then uh, with honeywell i said where i developed various and this is a last one or the latest sorry not sorry to say the last one actually it is developed for cng pumps in cng pumps uh, uh, the pumping uh, or the compressor room has got two sensors like this uh, one is at a bearing and second is at a control panel and it watches or it uh, monitors the uh, any fire or flame to occur or occurs okay so these sensors are actually used in uh, cng the similar design with a different constructions uh, or uh, configuration are used in furnaces and boilers so those are also uh, developed in the past but those photographs are not and not showing because that is the past tense this is the present tense then i recently this is the sir but abade sir as well as all other friends of from the our uh, family or tech forum is a classic example of synergy or the working together thing okay this is actually a product developed by our our friend with 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 me of course in collaboration 
मिस्टर श्रीधर करकरे ओके वी डेवलप दिस वोटेक्स कूलर एंड वोटेक्स कूलर इज वेरी मच रिक्वायर्ड फॉर पर्जिंग एंड प्रेसराइजिंग सिस्टम ओके दिस इज अ प्योर मैकेनिकल रेफ्रिजरेशन सिस्टम एक्चुअली and uh, it is required uh, to um, cool down the uh, any ambient temperature rise in the control panel the purge control panel uh, because there are various techniques simple technique is a dilution in which you again purge the uh, control panel but if something goes beyond that ambient condition then you have to cool it down so for cooling you require ac there are there are of course exproof explosion proof acs air conditioners are also available they are very costly at the same time sometimes this simple techniques are also can be used so we have developed this vortex cooler okay and now we are going to uh, make the models and the business uh, uh, means uh, typical uh, catalog kind of thing for uh, different uh, sizes of btus and all that and the peltier cooling solutions this uh, as i said in the my first slide fire is uh, actually a, a cause because of the temperature the cooling solutions or the cooling system is very much uh, uh, concern or very much a topic for the uh, hazardous area um, protection uh, systems so what different cooling thing uh, cooling solutions you can have so peltier i is, um, is promising one so not much done but i am actually working upon it in the intrinsic safe thing i already have pressure sensors proxy gas hall sensor and temperature rh use and flow sensors certified what certified and one more thing in flame proof and uh, sorry x proof systems uh, as i said i have been pointed during those uh, uh, 60079 dash uh, chapters sub chapters uh, this is a uh, good business uh, model as such it is a system integration design testing approvals and certifications for the customers for the third, uh, means you can work like a licensing and do these jobs okay installations and audits and kind of things so that is also good uh, business uh, front the new thing going to happen in recent uh, present tense now is that ahu with chemical filtration system at ongc uran okay so it is a toxic environment i am going to uh, provide it is a simple uh, room with a ah but uh, it has to be got extended with a chemical filters okay and here comes the role of uh, people like ncl actually speaking and to aid us or to help us to deal with such situations okay the toxic environment damages the machines and all that as well as it is very inhuman to work in these places uh, in spite of all masks and whatever you do but that is not a good thing to uh, it's a good working environment so actually these are the actually solutions and uh, we have got the solutions from the companies uh, abroad and uh, mnc's and we are going to do that but here comes the uh, role of uh, indigenous development and probable solutions from within our country the same thing is going to happen for with the pollutions contaminations and virus so all these uh, are the new uh, ventures as i said already this is also why i am showing again my first presentation was with this equipment uh, and facility container and that you know, uh, plug and play pick and place kind of calibration system again i am showing this thing because uh, here again i see the opportunity in the hazardous area in trombe itself uh, they have got the stub stations and piping and pumping station, uh, stations and they do uh, mobilize them as and when required and as you mobilize any facility you require to have a shelter shelter for human being shelter for instrument shelter for uh, office or equipment or control panels and all that and those thing can be a modular those thing can be a, like a pick and place and plug and play so i am going to uh, go into this area also so these are the things uh, are my plans actually With, uh, when you come across with various uh, business associates uh, with Mr. Shah as well as uh, Jitendra, uh, uh, there are two people with whom I can. I'm dealing with the gas detectors. We have got the gas detectors certified, and uh, actually Shah himself integrates them. They are for hydrocarbons and fuels actually. And one more, uh, I have got a business associate who deals with the chlorine, SOx, and NOx, and hydrogen sulfide. 
for him i have de- uh, done a thing called chlorine cylinder bank auto changeover system and chlorine leak mitigation system and other around thing so i deal with uh, these hazardous area thing quite a, quite a bit presently i have got uh, certifications uh, approvals iuc is i said bis follows that and then peso is also mandatory and required for oil and uh, refineries uh eil approval is uh, ongoing and uh, it is not a, a, a fixed thing it is an ongoing process and it uh, comes and uh, it happens as and when uh, situation based it is actually and our customers are, themselves are actually our tools actually. my future plans are like this i want to bring the technology or a product from abroad for this thing of course i am going for icex and atex approvals okay which requires a lot of finance for that and uh, it is not as simple as the indian standards and uh, simpler uh, dhanbad thing then i am going to develop a pneumatic uh, actually it is on the verge of completion and then uh, uh, mr karkar is also helping me in that uh, for the pneumatic controller now what is this pneumatic controller as i said in the embed as this thing corrosion uh, pressurized control i have developed it has got a intrinsic safety intrinsic safe um, sensors and a controller which is embedded controller uh, but uh, uh, it has electronic it is electrical it requires power pneumatic controller means there is no electricity pure pneumatic and the last uh, out, output of the pneumatic controller is maybe a limit switch or a contact you know in the contact okay which will trigger the any alarm or any control system so the last point is only electrical contact switch okay potential free contact baki entire thing is a pneumatic control so that uh, thing i am developing it is almost at the last uh, phase of development there is a issue is there i am tackling that issue this market is quite huge all the motors in the hazardous area require this pneumatically controlled purging and pressurizing of that means use the same compressed air to control the purging and pressurizing system use the same compressed air for vortex cooling for cooling the thing so i am using compressed air as my energy i uh, means because for, for this presentation as well as for my own studies i realized that uh, it is the one area which has been overlooked or not uh, looked much as i mr rabade said the only uh, uh, boxes only that aluminum housings are very common but actually uh, the other things were missed that's why i focused on uh, the second thing what is the purging and pressurizing or the intrinsic safety uh, in our forum uh, in our friend circle we must be having many electronic engineers many things uh, can be many sensors or many circuits or many electronic uh, stuffs can be converted into intrinsic safe uh, devices uh, to be used in hazardous area Uh, with uh, all compliances all things taken care so one more thing has been uh, missed that is the extent uh, um, increase safety exe okay and why i am uh, just uh, uh, counting on it because it is as a alternative as well as it is a cost effective solution and as well as it is very uh, means uh, easy way to do the things than going for a conventional way more exi product i have just now said and cooling solutions in electronic circuit as this uh, progress uh, happened in hazardous area and machines and devices and sensors and everything i noticed that uh, as long as there were electrical machines uh, hoist or uh, motors or uh, control panels switching etc pumps no issue was there because those were all electrical things okay even the power electronics were also not issue as such because power electronics deal with deals with the um, heat and uh, more power consuming things but it, they are robust and they are quite uh, so designed for that uh, kind of uh, high temperature high current things okay but now as it comes to the uh, in, uh, technologies like uh, integrated circuits and all that uh, the criticality happening is because of the electronic circuit deterioration because of the ambient conditions if the it is been you can go on youtube and google and you find that the electronic circuits get deteriorated very fast if you go the ambient conditions go from 23 degree centigrade to even 32 degree centigrade 
the performance falls to 50%. Now you consider that if you have got a circuit, okay, you are designed for some purpose and its performance deteriorating, then what would be the outcome? We don't know actually, uh, means as uh, last lecture also we said, we don't know things are very, very much, I mean, too many. And then we don't realize what to do and what is happening, why the faults are there. So it is all happened because of the deterioration of the electronic circuits. And it is happened because of the ambient conditions. And these ambient conditions are worst in these hazardous locations. They are not at all a, um, normal uh, shop floors or normal uh, clean rooms or normal uh, our business houses. Those are all uh, dangerous places, I mean to say. So this cooling solutions for electronic circuit is actually a very nice area to look into it. Wireless communication network, the five limits are there. Okay. Wireless communication network. Now what is happening is that the entire globe is actually going for a, a wireless communication and uh, standards are also revised and uh, means, uh, regulated. But in India, we are still lacking behind. Uh, we are not up to date and up to mark. And we are somehow not uh, equipped with the uh, wireless communication networks in uh, hazardous area. I don't know for reasons. Okay, they will come. They have to come, but they are not actually. But this is a classic uh, because usually we know LAN and WAN and all that. It's quite common Ethernet and all that. But why wireless communication not getting popular in this hazardous area, uh, in uh, lo locations like refineries and all that? That is a big question actually. Uh, that is not a case in international scene. But uh, this is also a good area to look into uh, wireless communication network. Now, I mean, my expectation with a forum and association like ours is that it should be a knowledge sharing and a wisdom sharing. It should. It, I am doing it for the more for the awareness purpose. And I am definitely uh, from my first, uh, not from first, from the second lecture, I have mentioned human life and property and nature environment and the security as a concern. And now I am just not, uh, not telling you as a sake of that uh, forum thing, but I got examples. The example, first example is Vortex Cooler. I deal, I, I do this development of Vortex Cooler with the help of our own family member, Tech Forum family member, that is Mr. Sridhar Karkare. The same thing with Rabde, Mr. Vilas Rabde. I am going to work with antennas. Now the today's morning session was of the antenna on antennas. This antenna is going to play major role in wireless communication in uh, everywhere. Okay, and uh, of course in hazardous area. Those antennas are low energy, low rabies, okay? They are not for as um, energy uh, intense as ham you were describing in the morning session. But still, Mr. Rabre and the similar uh, this, uh, people of expertise, they know this business well, antenna. And uh, this antenna is going to be a, a good technology to share with among ourselves. And the BIS, we have got uh, some uh, experts in our own forum who are um, expert in BIS and they are uh, attached to BIS and all that. So uh, these things actually help each other and the BIS has to be uh, means, uh, deal with uh, independently as well as mutually. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Makran, for this wonderful overview. I must appreciate your efforts uh, sharing knowledge. We'll keep the session open for a question and answer. Uh, please identify yourself and fire the question. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, please. I am Vijay Gate. Uh -huh. uh, I know how difficult uh, is this uh, flame proof uh, and explosion proof for design needs. I've been myself involved in it uh, long back though, mm -hmm. somewhere between 1985 to 1990. Mm -hmm. Uh, congratulate, uh, I congratulate the speaker today because I think it requires a lot of details and it requires uh, yeah. instrumentation. Uh, there are not too many calculations possible sometimes and so on. Mm. Uh, I want to uh, just for information, I want to tell a peculiar situation that I face myself. Okay. Uh, we used to design and manufacture uh, communication stations for industrial communication. Mm -hmm. uh, those stations, apart from everything else, Mm -hmm. had a microphone and loudspeaker within the station. So uh, you cannot seal it because sound has to come out yeah. and go in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we don't know how to really solve the problem. Mm 
mm. but later i saw a paper somewhere which mm. talked about uh, filtered metal filters okay these are uh, used in oil industry for filtering oils and so on small metal balls uh, seem fused together by sintering process mm -hmm. they leave some gaps between the metal balls mm -hmm. i read a paper that these can be used for uh, flame proof uh, situations sometimes mm -hmm. so we actually uh, did a lot of experimentation and designed uh, acoustic filter wow which used to uh, which provided transparency for acoustic uh, waves mm -hmm. but uh, and but still maintain adequate flame path. Mm. Uh, that was interesting. We, we had to do a lot of experimentation for uh, metal ball size and so on. But finally, we uh, could do it. It was certified by CMRS uh, at that time. And uh, we used to use it in coal mines and uh, oil refineries. I just stated this because there are strange situations that you come up <laughs> and you need to find solutions, yes. which you don't have ready-made available. Yeah. Congratulations, Mr. Vaidya, again. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice development you did, huh? centered metal fire filters. Nice one, actually. Okay, any more questions or want to share something? Uh, yes, uh, I, I want to have a question. Uh, this is Srujan Zoshi. Uh -huh. Bol Srujan. Hmm. Uh, uh, there is one uh, uh, Certification for in I see encapsulation is used. I think yes, yes, I am M M M M. Uh, M. Uh. So uh, that is basically what I understand is that is uh, when there is an enclosure and uh. a PCB is there in that enclosure, uh -huh. uh, potting material is filled yeah, in. Yeah. Yes, so yes. that uh, no uh, hazard is uh, take a hazard uh, yes. uh, exchange takes place. Yes. So uh, now. Mm, if we uh, there is you know, why can that solution be not used universally in the sense where exd enclosures are used there is always a flame path uh -huh. but okay. where uh, these encapsulation uh, device is used there is generally they don't provide a flame path mm -hmm. so uh, can you please explain that what is the benefit of using this uh, encapsulation Mm -hmm. And why it is not used as a general in all flame proof or hazardous uh, uh -huh. areas? Yeah, actually, good question. But actually, it is like this. I told you there are six zero zero seven nine dash seven nine dash, and there are sub chapters, sub class, uh, this thing. Okay, in the same standard, what they did is that uh, they, first they did uh, with the mines. And they started with a general, area, general uh, standard for the flame and explosion, and then they have to deal with, mitigate with the situations. So they deal with first with a uh, aluminium housing, which will which will not explode, which will not uh, uh, do any harm uh, of the explosion, and then uh, uh, then they went for the uh, pressurizing and purging, etc. So what you are talking about is one kind of protection. It cannot be a universal thing. What it means? Uh, it cannot be universal thing. I mean to say. Uh, good morning. I am Pramod Deshpande. Uh, are there any water-based cooling systems are required in uh, to protect uh, reduce the temperature in control system? I am basically chemical engineer and good in heat transfer. Uh -huh. So uh, I just wanted to know whether because I, there are certain compact heat exchangers can be offered, mm -hmm. which can be worked as a control panel cooling, but mm -hmm. it will be more effective with water based. So is there water based or mm -hmm. air cooling is preferred? What is the thing? Water cooling is nowhere uh, in the in covered in the IC or ISO as a as a flame proof or explosion proof protection. Okay. So it will be uh, then cooling by gas or cooling by air is accepted. No, it is not a cooling actually speaking. It okay. is actually it is not a cooling actually. Uh, our gas is nowhere. Ah, nitrogen you mean to say? But nitrogen is now gone. It is a compressed air, and that is also only for only for six zero zero seven nine dash two, in which that pressurizing and purging is done. And I mentioned about the cooling by vortex cooling because the compressed air was available over there. That's it. Okay. 
and then uh, uh, what else i said about is the air conditioner uh, flame proof x proof air conditioner okay. uh, which is also not a good solution but uh, sometimes you have to provide it for the cases and third thing i talk about the peltier uh, thermoelectric but it is a thermo as you all know that thermoelectric cooling is all that only for the localized cpus or something like electronic sensors or something like that it is not for entire solution for entire uh, protection of uh, uh, yeah thank you mm -hmm. second question was related to electrolyzers now mm -hmm. hydrogen is being produced as a green hydrogen uh -huh. and there is a, a system which is nothing but uh, you are providing a low voltage uh, to the electrolysis cell uh -huh. and the current may be in the range of 1 to 3 amperes and voltage may be in the range of 2 to 4 volt mm -hmm. per cell Mm. And in such situation, what kind of when hydrogen and oxygen is going liberated mm. in the process? Mm. Uh, uh, electrolysis cell or this kind of system are there in uh, certain chemical processes, but in new context, what could be the safety system or what could be the kind of thing for electrolyzer or, or what yeah. way the hydrogen is classified in terms of uh, okay. electrical system? Okay, okay. Now there are two things actually. Hydrogen, as a, I said about uh, this thing, uh, locations. Yeah. I have said about the location or the occurrences of the fire or flame in these areas. In these areas, okay. 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 These are the areas, okay. And uh, it, it also I mentioned about the gas station and petrol pump, okay. Yeah. So, so these are actually it started with the mines and it has been stopped at the gas station where we filled our gas or our petrol in our vehicle. Okay. So now these are being covered by ISO and IEC and of course by all other attacks and uh, NEC and all that. This hydrogen thing is actually I have not seen in these standards. Okay. And it is likely to become separately. Mostly I, I think so. Likely to be... Uh, induced into this ISO uh, as a separate entity because it is going to be a different kind of uh, handling and you talk about one ampere one ampere is nowhere acceptable in hazardous area forget about voltage they actually deal with energy capacitance inductance those are the two uh, energy okay. storing devices battery itself is the energy storing but, device but so, people are coming up with la large amount of electrolyzers and things yeah, like yeah. that yeah so, so there is different standard must be there. Not this no, is not NASA, NASA has declared certain standard. Yeah, yeah. which is available in open source. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, what I mean to say is that I am so, showing you the standards. Okay, ISO, IES, yes. and IES, IES, BIS. I mean to say. Yeah. So those things are not covered in this. I mean okay. Yeah. yeah. I am uh, Nilesh Kumkulikar. I have a question. Hmm. Uh, see, there are MCC panels which requires cooling fan, either because there is a VFD in it or a thyristor in it. Mm. Suppose this MCC panels, we have to keep it in hazardous zone. Yeah. So, obviously, cooling fan and this thing, it makes the MCC panel open. Yeah. So, what are the solutions for such panels? Purging, purging, purging. And purging, uh, then you have to do away with the cooling fan or... Uh, no, no, no. Actually, uh, I said that time uh, previously about these VFDs. Okay. VFDs are most challenging in the hazardous locations. But once you know that the heat, uh, the heat sink design, then you can deal with it like one is the air conditioner, it is a flame proof, X proof, uh, it is certified. There are vendors who can deal with that. And then otherwise, purging and pressurizing uh, is the one solution in which one method is the dilution method in which as the temperature rises, you again purge the uh, panel and uh, scavenge the uh, hot air out and fill it with a fresh air. If still that thing is not sufficient, as you, it is same as a control, uh, sorry, cooling fan. Cooling fan does the same thing. It actually scavenges the air now. So yes. I'm doing the same thing. And now still if the ambient conditions are worse, then you go for a vortex cooler. And still the things are not uh, under control by these or uh, the option is a uh, thermoelectric cooling, uh, which is to be dealt in local. Uh, its, its purpose is a local uh, cooling thing. For example, VFD uh, has to be with a bank of Peltier or the uh, electro uh, thermoelectric cooling. 
to deal with the cooling thing but that's the same thing the hot uh, out, output of the hot uh, thing heat has to be scavenged out by some method so you have to design it actually actually uh, during my presentation i missed one thing or you might have noticed it all of you uh, this is a system business this is not a product business this is not a trading uh, you have to deal with as mr vijay uh, ghate said you have to deal with uh, uh, the situation there is no hard and fast and fixed solution for uh, means uh, any solution i am to say you have to deal with deal with it what is vortex cooler work um, i have not understood vortex cooler uh, how does it work it is a, a great scientist called hilch and there is one more his partner they invented that okay it is a heat and mass transfer principle okay and that uh, i salute and i bow uh, humble uh, <laughs> respect for him so that is a technology actually vortex cooling and myself and mr sridhar karkare had developed that okay till this point i was importing it and using it but now i started uh, manufacturing my own so i think uh, we are coming to an end of the question and answer session friends it was a wonderful presentation wonderful overview of hazardous area and how one should take care and i think the interactions also were very very interesting